We have new information about the people aboard a business plane that flew into restricted airspace over Washington, D.C. before crashing in Virginia on Sunday. That plane was registered to a Florida man who lives in Melbourne, and he tells The New York Times that it was his daughter and granddaughter, both on board and among the four victims, along with the two-year-old's nanny and the pilot. Barbara Rumpel, who has served on the NRA's Women's Leadership Forum, posted last night on Facebook's NRA event writing, quote, my family is gone, my daughter and granddaughter, end quote. John Rumpel says his family was returning to their home on Long Island after visiting his house in North Carolina. The lead federal investigator was at the crash site today, and now Lauren Blanchard brings us with the latest from D.C. Federal investigators tasked with probing Sunday's plane crash killing all four on board still haven't identified the cause. But in a statement, the National Transportation Safety Board said they will begin the process of documenting the scene and examining the aircraft Monday morning. That plane hit going awfully fast. So, I mean, there's not going to be a lot of uh, debris out there that you're going to be able to piece together. But, you know, NTSB has done this a lot of times, and I'm always surprised that they're able to put all this back together. This home security video captured the sonic boom that thundered Sunday afternoon as six U.S. fighter jets scrambled to intercept the private plane over Washington's restricted airspace. The FAA says the Cessna citation took off from Elizabethtown, Tennessee, and was headed for Long Island's MacArthur Airport when it turned around and flew a straight path over D.C. before crashing over mountainous terrain near Montebello, Virginia. This has the signatures of some sort of incapacitation. Sunday's crash echoes the 1999 death of golfer Payne Stewart, whose Learjet flew for thousands of miles before crashing into fields after the cabin lost pressure and flew aimlessly across the country with the pro golfer on board. We'll know when, when the pilots turn in their debrief what they saw, whether the there are signs that it was a decompression and the interior cockpit is frosted over. The military says it chose not to shoot down the Cessna because it was maintaining a constant high altitude and route, meaning it wasn't clear if it was a threat. In Washington, Lauren Blanchard, Fox News.